Life in Italy in the 19th century was very difficult compared to the unified country today. It faced many challenges economically, politically, and socially, with the entire country being ruled under the fascist leader Benito Mussolini. While still facing the financial and economic difficulties due to the war, the citizens during this time had very little control over the personal life, with the state controlling almost every aspect. Many Italian cities following the Second World War and the dissolution of Mussolini regime had been bombed and badly damaged. The unemployment rate during this time period has risen with the value of the Italian currency the lira collapsing. From 1945 to 1946, the cost of goods doubled as well as the cost of living becoming 20 times higher than in 1938. The recovery to the peace industry was long and difficult with no commodities. Additionally, the food rationing during the rise in cost of goods brought the diffusion of the black market. And in 1948, with the Marshall Plan finally beginning, Americans Fund directly helped flourish the Italian economy once again. Through these troubled times, two children were born in a small town of Spasano, Calabria, my grandparents, Michele Bonanno and Emma Granata. My grandfather was born September 29, 1939, as the youngest child of 12. My nonno went to school until grade 5, afterwards living outside the town to work and lay bricks alongside his cousins. Unfortunately, at a very young age, my nonno lost his mom, never really having the opportunity to get to know her closer, and due to the big age gap between him and his siblings, he never really had the chance to get to know his older siblings further either. My grandmother was born June 9, 1941, as the youngest child of six. She went to school until grade five, where afterwards she would stay home with her mother, Conchetta, and the rest of her female siblings to help cook, clean, and sew, and perform regular household duties. In 1955, my grandmother's family moved to a new house beside a home where she would soon meet the love of her life. Their story began when my grandmother's brother, Francesco, ripped my grandfather's pants. This was set my grandfather who demanded Francesco to bring him to his home for someone in his family to fix his pants. Once returning to Francesco's home and meeting Conchetta, my nonno met a shy, beautiful girl upon which he took great interest. After that moment, my nonno made it his mission to make my nonno fall in love with him. He would purposely wait for her to finish her sewing classes and would purposely ride his bike on the usual path she would take home in hopes of getting her attention. He would pass notes through their connecting window where they would talk hours every night about various different topics and he would win contests to get my nonna's favorite chocolate. Although my nonna was trying her hardest to ignore his shameless attempts to gain her attention, nothing would stop the both of them from falling more deeply into each other as the day went by. In 1958, my grandfather showed up to my grandmother's house where he told her parents that he was immigrating to Canada to not participate in the military and for their blessing to marry their daughter. After secretly seeing all the attempts my nonna made to gain their daughter's attention, they of course agreed. Later that year, both their families went to church to get married, and a year later, in 1959, my grandfather immigrated to Canada, where he would live with his sister, Florina Bonanno. My grandfather's first year in Canada was tough, however, he had the help of his sister to ease the pain. My grandfather wanted to work for a year before bringing over my grandmother, as he wanted to provide my nonna with the life he knew she deserved. In the meantime, during the separation, my nonna would send my nonna money to buy jewelry, as well as they would constantly send each other love letters, with some including old pictures they had taken together in Italy. In 1960, after deciding it was time to start building a family together in Canada, my nonno bought my grandmother's boat ticket to immigrate to Toronto. This journey was long and hard, with the boat ride taking four days to land in Halifax and the train ride following taking an additional two. However, to my nonna, it was worth it, as she was getting what she always wanted, a nice life with the love of her life in a country where her children would grow and flourish. They would live with my nonno's sister Fiorina for two years before having saved enough money to buy a home just for themselves. On August 12, 1962, my grandparents' wishes came true as they welcomed together my zio Pietro Bonanno. Two years following, my nonna suffered a miscarriage, losing her first daughter. On December 4, 1967, my grandparents welcomed their second child, my mom, Rosalba Bonanno. Later on, my grandfather started his own construction business called the Bonanno Brothers where in 1978, he would save enough money to buy and build a forever home to raise their growing family in a bigger place. <laughs> Since then, both my grandparents continued to live in the home they built, where they had the pleasure of growing their family from two children to eight grandchildren. Although my grandparents left Italy for two very different reasons, both of them sought for the communal idea of a better life in Canada. My grandfather left to escape the military and the violence to seek work, and my grandmother left for love. Like many immigrants, these motivations play a key role in the hopes and dreams of finding a better life away from the place they used to call home, and these motivations not only encourage our desires, but also give us extra push that is needed for the next big step.
Now let's hear from my grandparents. What was the turning point for you to decide to immigrate to a new country? Ho deciso di venire a questo country perché il mio ragazzo veniva qua e io volevo stare con lui, lo volevo bene, so. Ho seguito lui. Dopo ci siamo sposati e mi è piaciuto stare qua, mi trovo bene qua. Ok, io sono venuto in Canada per cercare di stare meglio, cercare un lavoro, un lavoro e poi con il passare del tempo mi sono sposato in Canada. <laughs> Were there any outside influences that impacted your decision, such as family, friends, environment, or even personal fears? Yeah, gli amici dicevano, sì, sì, vai, vai, che bello, cambia, cambia, cambia paese, cambia tutto, è bello andare là. Ma i miei parenti, mamma, papà, i fratelli e sorelle, volevano che io restasse là perché le dispiaceva che io venivo tanto lontano. Ma io ho voluto seguire il mio ragazzo, sono venuta. Quando sono venuta in Canada, avevo sorelle, fratelle, Per me è stata una, una grande cosa. Are there any regrets about your decision or the past? Sì, ma avevo dei regretti perché non avevo i parenti vicini, mi, mi dispiaceva tanto averli lontani. Ma qua mi trovo bene, il mio marito mi voleva bene, ero felice, so una cosa o l'altra. Yeah. Non sono mai pentito di me che sono stato in Canada. Sono stato in Canada con, con tanto piacere, ho creato pure la cittadinanza canadese. Yeah. What are some of the challenges you faced following your immigration to Canada? The challenges that I faced because I came to a terra straniera, non sapevo la lingua, non avevo amicizia in prima. Ma piano piano mi sono abituata a parlare, a muovermi, a andare di qua e di là, a parlare con gli amici. So come adesso mi sento abbastanza bene. Yeah, quando sono stato in Canada ho continuato a lavorare, a, a mettere tutto a posto e ho formato la mia famiglia. Con, con passare il tempo ho fatto. Ho fatto una bella famiglia, la moglie e due figli. E mi trovo bene. E mi sono gioite e non me ne sono pentita. Oh, Although my grandparents' immigration was tough, they never regretted their decision. In Canada, they were able to build a wonderful life for themselves, their family, and for future generations. Now let's hear from my mom and her thoughts on growing up with immigrated parents and returning to the city they were born. Did you feel pressure growing up to succeed or live up to your parents' expectations to make their immigration worthwhile? Yes. Growing up in an Italian traditional family, um, there was a lot of pressure on me. I felt that my parents decided to immigrate to Canada to give their children a better life. And as a result, I, that gave me extra pressure to make sure that I made them happy and satisfied in terms of what they did provide for me. Um, many of the traditions, they wanted to continue even in Canada. So I needed to learn to accept that even though there were times that I didn't agree with it but in order to make them happy and, and see them happy I just went and I agreed to their terms and conditions if you want to call it that. You returned to Italy in the city and place your parents grew up and immigrated from. How do you feel upon your return and did you feel more connected with your parents or culture? I remember the day my parents told me that we were going to take our first trip to Italy. I was very reluctant. I was actually very sad that I didn't want to go because I felt that if they were so strict here, how would they be in Italy, given that we were going back to the country they were born and raised. However, upon arrival in Italy, I was beyond amazed. I was fascinated by the beauty um, Italy had to offer, and I had a better understanding as to why my parents did certain things and their behavior, which brought a lot of light into, into uh, my life. And as a result, I had more respect an understanding of my parents and I was very happy to see that. I was so happy that I actually ended up going back another three times afterwards in Italy because it was just absolutely amazing. And I'm very grateful that I come from an Italian background and hopefully some of the traditions that I grew up with, I could continue to pass on to my children here in Canada just to keep the Italian culture alive.
ambitions in order to have a better future. Many immigrants, however, do not have the opportunity to live out their ambitions because many of them die during their dangerous journey. Since 2014, about 40,000 individuals have died on worldwide migratory routes. And we as a society must not only raise awareness of this issue, but also encourage governments to implement better immigration regulations that allow people to migrate in a safer manner without having to choose between life and sanity. Lastly, to end this video, I would like to thank my grandparents. My pride and joy are one of the contributing factors that made me who I am today. I'm internally grateful for both individuals' selfless sacrifices, and I only hope I can make you proud enough to make your suffering worthwhile. So no 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 no. Thank you from, from the bottom of my heart. Ti amo sempre, tu Emma. Stasera ho comprato